This is News at 8. Hello and welcome to the Primetime Bulletin on Joy News on Maldi TV, also live on ABN, that is Sky 290. Coming up in the next 60 minutes, contractors working on the gas project assure first gas will be produced on April 28th this year. University of Ghana to have a 600-bed capacity teaching hospital by 2015. In Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority arrests 29-year-old Froster, purportedly recruiting people for the GRA. Also, commercial vehicles increase transport fares by 20% following approval from Transport Ministry. And the family of the late broadcaster Komla Dumo officially informed President Mahama of his death. Of course, we do have sports, we have showbiz and international news all coming up. Please don't go away. The details of the news now. The gas processing plant at Etuabo in the western region will be fully completed by March 2014, according to Sinopec. Contractors working on the project, the plant, which is 87% complete, will produce its first gas on April 28, 2014, and will be distributed after processing. Sinopec has given itself 66 more days to complete the Ghana gas project, although the company said the project is 0.77% behind schedule. Officials of the Ghana National Gas Company Limited, the Volta River Authority, the Jubilee Partners, among other stakeholders of the project on their visit to the plant site, were informed by Sinopec the plant in the next three months will produce gas for the country. Sinopec said the offshore pipeline which links the plant to the FPSO is about 96% complete, while the pipelines on shore are 97% complete. Utility facilities, including power generation sets, have been fixed with water tankers. However, Sinopec is yet to pre-commission the LPG tanks to fully operate as the, re as the radioactive chemical needed for it is yet to be imported from South Africa. Now you were informed that you're going to get the item by the end of the month of, uh, of, of January. I think there's a long chain of buyers, and so we are in the queue. So we are going to try to expedite uh, our procurement by getting the embassy involved in, uh, in South Africa. The delegation of Ghana and Sanopec will live here uh, with the help of uh, our embassy in uh, South Africa uh, to go to the supplies and make sure that we get it as quickly as possible and put it on air and effort it. To, uh, to, to Accra. The Ghana Gas Project is apparently the most awaited project in Ghana. Ghanaians are really looking forward to this project, the completion of it, because the power generation of the country uh, depends on it. Now, gas supply from the West African gas pipeline is currently erratic, and with the coming on stream of this project, the power generation of the country is expected to be somewhat stabilized. We have had a lot of delays with this project and we are hoping that this time around the dates that has been given would really uh, be the dates that we would have the first gas. The challenge with gas supply currently makes it crucial for government to ensure the completion of the project. There's repair work at Itoku, Itokchu or whatever, one of the areas and there's some problem there with the piping and there's some repair work taking place and that explains the, the drop in volumes. Uh, today they've tell, they told us today that the volumes will go up and so we are working with them. But it is very clear that while we are going to continue to engage to address the issue of gas from Nigeria, our critical focus must be on this gas project. And again, that's what I've said. We are going to do everything possible to support the operator. The Jubilee Partners also pledged they will cooperate with Sinopec and the GNGC to ensure the project is completed. What was the project is, is uh, more national than uh, in the individual institution because it allows us to, one, complete a project on schedule and on budget, to uh, make us available for thermal generation and therefore reduce the cost of, uh, of generation. I think the important thing right now is the coordination of our work, you know, so that we work together so that we meet the target far more than debating around any other issue 
coordinated work is what is, and that's what the minister has said he's going to lead us to do which is the right thing so the coordination is what we need right now it is uh, very gratifying to see a lot of progress has been made we are committed the jubilee partners are committed to working to the schedules that have been established to ensure that everything is in place per our responsibilities at the appropriate time and i think on an ongoing basis it's going to be very important that the task force is fully inclusive that all of the stakeholders are fully committed to working together to allow us to interrogate each other regarding our own responsibilities to build up the full confidence that we are doing the right things and being prepared to take the appropriate actions at the appropriate time to allow the project to be brought to completion. Meanwhile, all funds needed for the completion of the project has been made available to the contractors. Sinopec assured they will surely complete the project by March 31 and distribute gas a week after April 28. Eight. Reporting from a travel in the Western Region, Abigail Adumakwenji for Joy News. A filing of nominations for national executive positions of the new patriotic party has opened in Accra. Over 50 candidates across all ranks of the party are vying for these positions, including that of chairmanship. The filing for national executive positions of the NPP comes on the heels of the party's regional executive elections held over the weekend. Several posters of aspiring candidates adorn the wall of the NPP headquarters. First vice chairman of the party, Fred Owari, now contesting the chairmanship position, is upbeat about his chances. The party delegates are looking for someone who understands the current position of this party and the fact that we are in opposition and desire quite anxiously to get into office in 2016. And so I share with them my vision for this party in terms of developing and implementing strategies down to the constituency level for winning the elections at the constituency level. Incumbent Chairman Jacob Bichibi Lamte believes his track record and experiences from the 2012 elections will enable him to secure the mandate of delegates. Four years ago, I, was the, I had a track record in business, I had a track record in communication, I had a track record in management. I've been managing one of the largest uh, business groups in this country. I had a track record as the regional chairman, three times regional chairman for Greater Accra, and be successfully made MPP the largest party in Greater Accra. I had a track record of having been twice the campaign manager for candidate J.A. Kufour, successfully to win the election and take us out of our position. Director of Elections for the NPP, Martin E.J. Corsa said, the party had put in place stringent mechanisms to ensure issues likely to mar the outcomes of the elections are handled peacefully. We have in place a well and carefully composed elections committee at all the regions with the mother elections committee sitting at the national. We are engaging members in this process on an even platform. The platform for engagement should be acceptable to all. There should be fairness. And so just as we've been guide, done or been guided by the previous elections, so are we going to ensure we do for the national chairmanship, especially so when even the stakes are much, much more higher in this particular election. March 1, 2014 is the scheduled date for these elections. Well, let's stay with the NPP a little while longer. The Central Regional Branch of that party is determined to put the past behind and resolve its difficulty. This, the party believes, will enable it to recapture all parliamentary seats that it lost in previous elections. Now, before the 2008 elections, the NPP had 16 out of the 19 constituencies in the region, but currently it has only eight members of parliament. The new patriotic party is preparing feverishly for the 2016 general elections. The just ended elections of party executives to stir the party's affairs is an indication of this preparedness for victory in 2016. Member of Parliament for Commander Edina Eguafu Ebrim constituency, Nana Atu Atha, who spoke to journalists in Agona Suedru during the party's regional executive elections, said the party should learn from its shortcomings and challenges in order to forge ahead in unity. Robert Kuti is now the new regional chairman, leading the newly elected 10 member regional executives.
Now, the first phase of work on a 600-bed University of Ghana teaching hospital is about 17% complete. The hospital, which is expected to be completed by 2015, will serve as a major training facility for medical students of the university. The University of Ghana, through the government, acquired a loan facility of 217 million U.S. dollars from the Israeli government to build a 600-bed capacity teaching hospital. Work at the site began in April 2013 after the contract was signed in October the previous year. The project includes a central building, maternity and pediatrics, inpatient wards, training and simulation center, as well as a staff housing which is yet to commence. Minister of Health Shariaiti and the university authorities who paid a visit to the site on Monday were assured the project would be handed over 36 months from now. Apart from the housing, each of them so far we've come out of the ground. We are on the first floor, the, about 50 percent or so of the first floor slab has been cut and the columns are coming up for the second floor. In the next couple of months they will be able to complete uh, um, everything. Sector Minister Shariaite noted the completion of the project will go a long way to enhance the training of health personnel and improve the doctor-patient ratio. We'll be able to send more doctors to the rural areas, you know, very deprived communities and also this uh, hospital, this training institution will also train special doctors in uh, various uh, specialties in the medicine. So it means that uh, we'll also save money by sending doctors overseas. Uh, we hope that uh, this will help us to cut down on the high attrition rate of uh, medical personnel. She added, plans are also underway to construct a similar facility at KNUSD, Volta and Cape Coast Medical Institutions. Vice Chancellor Professor Ennis Aite said the 600-bed hospital, when completed, would be used to its full capacity. This new facility, clinical work for all of these professionals would be enhanced. It's our intention that we should have the best facility in the region through the arrangements that have been made Many people will be going out to Israel for training in how to run this hospital. It's our promise to the people of Ghana that the hospital will be used to the best of our abilities. When completed, it is expected that the facility with specialized centers will train about 1,000 doctors within the next 10 years, which will also go a long way to improve health care delivery as well as ease the pressure on the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. Now, victims of the demolition exercise carried out by the Tema Development Corporation are receiving support from the NADMO and other religious bodies. The victims who are still residing at the area say they have nowhere to go and are waiting for their lungs to be given back to them. Over 200 families were rendered homeless as a result of a demolition exercise carried out by the Tema Development Corporation last week. The National Disaster Management Organization has over the weekend supported victims with relief items such as tents, mosquito nets and mattresses among others. Some NADMO officials who were at the site on Monday afternoon to assess the situation were still supporting victims with more relief items. Residents received bags of rice, maize, buckets, among others. The Metro coordinator spoke to join News. We actually, we don't know anything. Not more. We don't have uh, no anything about a land dispute between TDC and the victims. Our mandate is to go to the aid of the needed victims. We are a humanitarian uh, organization. When the people of Ghana is in crisis. We have to go to there to assist them. And that's exactly what we have come here to do. Yes. The Church of Pentecost in Ajay Kujo has been supporting residents with portable drinking water and free medical screening carried out over the weekend. When we saw what has happened and uh, the people sleeping outside, some of them traumatized, yeah, we saw it as a social responsibility of the church to come in to help the people so that they can at least be, be, be relieved. Um. Meanwhile, proprietors of Pediko International School in Ajay Kojo, whose school has been marked to be demolished soon, is pleading with authorities to come to her aid. She expressed worry at the situation. Oh, <laughs> I don't want to bring it out, but... It is, it is a, a difficult condition. 
because they are selling the whole place. According to them, they are uh, developing here to sell. So they will by all means sell it to me again. And the condition is difficult. Uh, I just don't want to. Do you think? Uh, only God, God knows because... <laughs> only God knows. Mm, because we have talked to them a lot to, to help us. But still, maybe after the demolition, they will still do something about it. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if you follow Matilda Pomaga for Joy News. Yes, you're still watching the primetime bulletin here on Joy News. I am. When we return from this break, we'll take you to the presidency where the family of Komla Dumo uh, paid a courtesy call. You're welcome back. Many thanks for staying. Now, the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority has arrested 29-year-old Rans for granting. He is suspected to have taken various sums of money from 30 school leavers with the promise of securing them employment at the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority. Within the media in Accra, the Chief Revenue Officer of the Customs Division of GRA, Seidu Idrisu, said they received intelligence report of the suspect's operation and had him arrested Monday morning. He explained that the suspect arranged a meeting Monday morning with two school leavers to give them the appointment letters after taking 2,300 Ghana cities from them earlier. He was arrested whilst getting ready for the arranged meeting upon Etipov. According to Idrisu, the suspect, in a preliminary interrogation, admitted collecting money from the ladies with the promise of securing them employment. Last Friday, now the 24th of January, we had some information coming from our intelligence unit that a gentleman is going around, I mean, uh, collecting monies from unsuspecting uh, people and claiming to be recruiting uh, officers into the custom division of the Ghana Revenue Authority. So we detailed a team to go with some of the, I mean, uh, some of the uh, victims who were scheduled to meet him at a, a spot. They got there and they were able to pick him up. The gentleman is by name Ransford Corantin, and he's currently assisting us in the investigation. He advised the public to look out for proper channels of securing employment in the country. We will also like to use this uh, forum to appeal to everybody that when they hear of any recruitment by the Ghana Revenue Authorities, they should be able to come into and verify themselves instead of paying monies to people. Because when we are recruiting, we don't, we don't collect any money from anybody. Some victims spoke to the news team. I gave Mr. Ransford granting an amount of seven million to get me access into the SEPs, the, um, the SEPs, into SEPs. But unfortunately, not, um, unfortunately, what he did wasn't right. So I was called today to come to, um, to, come to the SEPs head office. So when I came, I, I got to know he was arrested. What he was doing wasn't good. So. I want my money back. At Accra, waiting for him. And we met him at Somutek uh, Industrial Area. Yeah, according to him, he said someone helped him to become what he is today. So he is also helping people. And what we are supposed to pay is 3,000 Ghana CC. But for the beginning, we'll pay 1,005. To rest assured that after the training, we'll give him back his 1,005. And we'll have to uh, pay 100 Ghana for our fingerprint. And this thing is done at, at the police station. And we have a contract letter later on before they give us the appointment letter. But before then, he rest assured us that this, con this contract will, be, will begin 24th January. Now, the Gushel District Assembly in the northern region is taking up steps to improve access to health care, water and sanitation facilities for residents. Accessing clean, safe water in particular is a big problem, especially during the dry season when animals compete with residents for water from dugout wells. To alleviate the situation, 
The District Assembly and its developmental partners have rolled out a water and health scheme in 45 communities. As part of these schemes, six dugout wells and 39 orphan boreholes will be rehabilitated through the Ghana Social Project, New Energy and other development partners. District Chief Executive Alhaji Alhassan Fusaini made the announcement as separate debers in four communities, Bugi, Paneshi, Zilindo and Patinga during the commissioning of a health center. Bushegu has taken the pace. We are setting the pace for the rest of the districts to follow throughout the country. That is why we are commissioning this youth compound today as part of our present manifesto to enhance the living standard of his people. Alhaji Abdul Rahman Yakubu, District Director of Health Services, said the district is gradually winning the war against maternal deaths. In the year 2011, Bushabu recorded seven maternal deaths. In 2012, we repeated the same seven maternal, maternal deaths. And that actually pricked my office and we put in place very pragmatic programs to make sure that we beat down the maternal mortality if we have to meet the million development goals come 2015. Alhaji Yakubu also said the directorate and its partners, especially the Northern Sector Action on Awareness, is gradually breaking the myth among men that pregnancy and childbearing are the sole responsibilities of women. He explained that the stakeholders identified a lot of challenges, including poor infrastructure, inadequate personnel and negative attitudes that call for urgent attention. And after the presidency, now President John Mahama has pledged support for the funeral rite of Komla Dumo, who died in London on January 18. The president was addressing the Dumo family, who called on him to officially inform the presidency of Komla's death and related arrangement. Funeral arrangements were, however, not given. The delegation was made of members of the Dumo family, including Komla Dumo's father, Professor Enes Dumo, his sister, Mawena Treba, the Beho family representing his mother's side, as well as those from his wife, the Kwansa family. Its leader and spokesperson, Togbi Amenyafiti V, expressed gratitude to Ghana and the world for the tributes which he said have kept the family consoled. In accordance with the tradition of the flowers and with your kind permission, Your Excellency, Komla's body will be received by the chief and elders of of his royal clan on the tarmac on Araba from London. Your Excellency, the future of Komla's wife and children, they are still in London and they are so much important to us. And to all Ghanaians, we appreciate your love for Komla. And to the world, your tributes heal the wounds in our hearts. A member of the delegation, Ambassador Victor Beho, said Koshi Dumo, Komla Dumo's younger brother, is representing the family in the United Kingdom to ensure remains of Komla is brought back home, although there have been some delays. Until then, dates and any further arrangement could not be made. President Mahama said the family will not be left alone. I took the opportunity on my way back to stop and console his family and to see the children. And... Um, it's a very young family. It's the worst thing that can happen, you know, for a parent, particularly a father, you know, to leave children of that age at this time. All of us who are, with, who are his friends, you know, grieve with you. And um, because I double as president of the state, I'll say on behalf of the government and people of Ghana, we are with you in this very difficult period. And um, whatever the state can do to support, you know, the family in respect of giving Komla a fitting farewell, the state will do. The chief of staff will be in touch with the family to discuss the funeral arrangements and um, will give whatever support we can to lighten the burden of this very grievous uh, incident. 
Komla, who belongs to a royal family in the Aflau Paramountcy, was christened Togwi Tenuvi after he was instilled youth commander-in-chief of the area. Kifti Andopia, Joy News, Flagstaff House. A memorial service has been held in honor of the late South African President Nelson Mandela, who died December last year. President John Mahama, who attended the service held under the auspices of the South African High Commission in Ghana, said Ghanaians should be influenced by Mandela's love, for sac love and sacrifice for country. The ceremony was to remember the former South African president in a similar service as those held around the world, as well as in South Africa. The country's High Commissioner to Ghana, Jeanette Sindovlu, said Africa must seize the moment to redeem its dignity. This, she said, was Mandela's dream. Look around you, and I think what you see around you are Africans who want to reclaim their dignity. Africans who don't litter and spoil the environment. This is the Africa that Madiba wanted for us. We want the totality of the African people to mobilize themselves and make sure that when countries talk about Africa, and they have started talking about Africa in a positive light. Archbishop Duncan Williams said Mandela's respect for humanity led him to exhibit greatness in the most humble manner. Those are the kinds of examples we want to see in our leaders, in the leaders of Africa. Not vindictiveness, not unforgiveness, not revenge, not using power and political offices or success or money or fame to settle scores. The ability to say I'm sorry when you are wrong and to say I'm wrong. Citing lessons from Mandela's life, President John Mahama lamented the lack of sacrifice and love for country in the Ghanaian society, traits he attributes to Nelson Mandela. I always say we must not just eulogize Mandela, but we must learn from his life. Do we love our country? Are we prepared to sacrifice, not even our lives, just a little discomfort for our country? I met with the Council of State. The, the last meeting uh, before the end of the year, and they flagged it as one of the issues. They said our level of patriotism and nationalism in Ghana has waned. Nobody is prepared to die a little for his country. And so as we celebrate Mandela, let's ask ourselves that question. He went through all that he went through because he loved his country and he loved his people and was prepared to sacrifice for them. The occasion was also attended by former President Rawlins, ministers of state, and other religious leaders. Kifti Andopia, Joy News, Action Chapel, Accra. Meanwhile, South African High Commissioner to Ghana, Jeanette Ndovlo, in a tribute to Komla Dumont, described him as one of the Africans who worked to restore Africa's dignity. She was speaking at the Action Chapel in Accra during the memorial service in honor of Nelson Mandela. Africans who want excellence are also mourning the young life of Komla Dumont and he's gonna join the likes of Nelson Mandela, of Kwame Nkrumah and all those Africans who have been in the struggle of liberation from dehumanizing poverty. The likes of Komla, I think his commitment was to ensure that the voice of the African people is heard globally. Let us take lessons from these proud sons of the soil and ensure that we walk in the footsteps and represent our continent in a way that is befitting, in a way that says the current breed of African leaders are determined to restore the dignity of the African people.
We'll be back with some business news. Please stay. So I'm here as always to give you an update in business. My name is Abigail Adamakwenchi. Now the general manager of GN Investments, Benjamin Kofiafre, has asked small businesses to take full advantage of opportunities the Ghana Alternative Markets presents to them. He believes the market, when assessed by SMEs, will enable them to raise long-term funding for the operations and give them global presence. One of the major problems SMEs have always identified has been raising capital for their work, expansion, new product lines and all that. Now the Ghana alternative market is to help these companies, you know, raise those, that long term capital they need for their businesses in a much uh, easier way than normal, okay, um, so that the cost of raising the capital is much lower than if they're going to the market to borrow. It, it also, you know, takes the pressure to pay monthly um, interest and all that away, gives them a bit of time to plan and utilize the funds properly. So that is why we believe that it's a market that every SME with its, its business must take advantage of. It is good for, uh, for people to look at that. And also for, for, for some Ghana to also share in what these SMEs are doing and to promote it outside Ghana where the opportunity is available. So I would, I would say that it is a, it's a very good market, a good product that the GSE has brought that all of us Ghanaians should support to make it successful. Uh, now, the, the processes uh, for these SMEs to list on the market, how different is it from uh, the other companies who do list? You are a broker. So let us understand how convenient this market is. Well, to start off, um, because of the relevance of the Ghana alternative market to the economy, what the GSE is doing is that there are certain uh, rules that they've bent over to make it a bit more flexible for the SMEs to list. To support them, there's the stock exchange in collaboration with some partners have put together a fund, an SME support, uh, listing support fund, because some SMEs might not be able to raise the initial money they need to engage the valuers, the auditors and accountants to do all that. Now, the, what the support fund is supposed to do is to help them pay for some of these costs. I look at some of the disclosures that, you know, the stringent disclosures that are, that are supposed to be made on the main market, but some of them have been watered down so the SMEs can easily list on the market. Again, if you look at the fact that as soon as somebody lists on the market, you have that global appeal. Because once you go there, somebody wants to know what, you are, what does this company do and whether I can take advantage. So there are so many positive sides, and I think, seriously, that all SMEs must look forward to listing on the alternative market. Well, government is taking steps to ensure Ghana becomes a host country for the new Western Central Africa shipping line. The ceiling promotional company with some requirements has opened the opportunity to all the 15 ECOWAS countries to bid to host the shipping line. Ghana's ministries of transport and trade, others working to secure an office space, offer free birthing rights and other diplomatic protocols towards having the headquarters of the shipping line in the country. This was disclosed by Joy Business by the first president First Vice President of the Ghana Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Prosper Anabla. Well, there's been missed uh, re feelings or reactions to the new transport fares being charged by commercial drivers in Ashaiman. The new fares announced by the Ghana Private Rural Transport Union on Monday, according to the commuters, will greatly affect their finances since there has not been a corresponding increase in their salaries. In separate interviews with Joy News, they called on government to intervene. The Ministry of Transport last week approved a 20% increase in transport fares for commercial vehicles operators after negotiations with the Ghana Private Road Transport Union and other transport unions. The approval follows recent increases in petroleum prices as well as increases in cost of vehicle spare parts. Ekufu, an electric engineer who commutes daily between Ashaiman and Kaneshi, says although the increase will affect his budget, there is nothing he can do about it. Um, we are pleading with the authorities. They should have sympathy on the ordinary Ghanaian. I believe um, this fair will, will affect uh, the masses and they should quickly do something about it. Other than that, 
I believe they are digging their own grave. We have nothing to do than to pay, and they have given us a list showing that it is true that they have, they have increased it. So we have nothing to say, but we are paying it and we are on it. I feel bad. I feel bad because I don't know how they are controlling the nation now, and I'm praying that God should intervene. Contrary to the popular scene where commuters clash with drivers whenever transport fares are increased, the drivers at a chairman we spoke to say the passengers have been generally calm about the latest increase. Oh, sir, the GPRTU in a statement announced an increase in fare for taxis by 10 pesos and 1 CD 40 pesos. Distance which hitherto cost 50 pesos have gone up by 10 pesos to 60 pesos, while distances that formerly cost 7 CDs will go up to 8 CDs 40 pesos. Fares on intracity buses or trotro will also go up between 10 and 50 pesos. Insurance companies say plans to hold the sale of insurance on credit would affect moves to encourage more people to take insurance. Insurance players, together with the National Insurance Commission, last week agreed to implementing the no premium, no cover policy from April this year. This would hold the practice where policyholders are given 90 days to pay up all their premiums. President of the Insurers Association, Kwame Gazo Abenyazi, however, tells Joy Business the directive would strengthen their financial position to honor claims of policyholders on time. And that'll be all by way of business reports. I'm Abigail Adumakwenchi. Do keep abreast uh, with business news on my door online. News making rounds in the world of sports. Local black stars are looking forward to their meeting with Nigeria in the semi-finals of the ongoing African Nations Championship in South Africa. Ghana handed DR Congo a 1-0 defeat yesterday, while the Nigerians have powered Morocco 4-3 to set up the clash. Vice Chairman of the Ghana Football Association, Fred Krinsel, is confident the stars can go all the way. We're certainly very proud of them. We went before we left Ghana, we knew they were going to do very well. And, you know, we're taking it game after game. And, you know, thanks be to God, we won today. It all depends on how we talk to the boys, the incentives that we're giving them. And today, we were at the uh, um, hotel to talk to them, you know, inspire them. And I believe the president was there as well, you know. So I believe that is what is working for us. I wouldn't say they pe performed beyond my expectations. We're taking it game by game, and we'll still continue to win our matches. It's a one-goal project. That's what we are on. There's a lot of pressure in football. You, you've got to get used to that. Um, we would have loved to score more, but in all the matches that we've played, we've scored only one goal. We'll work on that, and I believe that we should do well in our semi-final game against Nigeria. Some players who spoke to Joy Sports, Benedict Owusu, are confident of a great showing against the much fancied and free scoring Nigerians. We're going to hear from Nuru Sile as well as Alfred Nelson. Uh, first of all, I thank God we were able to win the match. As you saw on the PG, it wasn't easy for us. But all the same, we were able to manage to win by one good team. So I thank God. Uh, as, you can see, as you can see on the pitch, it wasn't easy. But uh, we thank we thank Almighty God. We thank Almighty God because uh, we the Congolese they came in all out and we also came in all out. We determined to win this match, and that's what we saw on the pitch and we were able to win. I think tactically we did very well. They were possessing and all eleven men. We had to come behind the ball, so I think we did very well. I'm I'm very happy with our performance. Um, the most important thing is the win. That is the three points. That it's it's the only thing that can qualify us. Whether it be 1-0, um, 2-0, 3-0, pr um, providing we are able to score and we are able to defend the goal, it's, it, it's okay. 
Well, I think the debate is on whether they can really beat Nigeria, but you definitely have to keep supporting the local black stars. Now, the Ghana League Club Association is demanding from government a refund of monies accrued as a result of the black stars' participation in the 2010 World Cup. The Ghana Football Association received from FIFA an amount in excess of 11 million US dollars for football development, which, according to Gaka, has not been made available after government's receipt. Alajit Raji is president of the Ghana League's Club Association. It's not football oh, association. FIFA will I say uh, World Cup money is for Ghana Football Association the, to develop football, not any other sports, not other sports. Okay. And if you go into a tournament and God willing, we had a proceed mm. amounting to about 11 point something million dollars. And the government of the day decide to collect all this money without spending a dollar on at least football pitches in the country. What are we doing to ourselves? Let us be frank with each other. That money was principally meant for football development. Yeah, it could be it could be pitches, it could be you know any other things. But one dollar since 2010 has not been spent on anything football in this country. So do you blame? Do you blame? Do you, do you blame the administrators? Do you blame? Do you blame the football club? Right, more. Let's talk about the transfer updates right now. Michael Ayson has joined his fellow Black Stars teammate Solomon Tari after completing the move to AC Milan. He's been speaking on his arrival in Italy. I'm very happy to be here, and uh, well, I've got my medicals tomorrow, so I hope everything goes well, then uh, I will be much happier. Well, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to seeing them too, and uh, I'm looking forward to you know, you know, do my best for the team and uh, for the team to win trophies, yeah. Yeah, yeah I spoke to him uh, two days ago, so we've already spoken, yeah. Well, I would like, I would like to say a big thank, uh, thank you to Chelsea, uh, you know, the president, Mourinho, and uh, everyone at the club, they've been very good for me. And, uh, well, I've been there for... Uh, for a couple of years, you know, this is my ninth season, and uh, you know they they let me come here, you know, to come and uh, you know enjoy my football and enjoy my career. So yeah, I would say a very big thank you to them, and uh, very thanks to the fans as well. They've been great for me. You know, my team at Chelsea has been great, and uh, they've always been there for me. So I would say hello to uh, all the fans, and uh, I'm looking forward to you know, enjoying play for the team and uh, make them happy. Right, so Michael Ayson has been handed the 15, number 15 jersey, that's one. The next thing is he's going to be unveiled tomorrow so we can all get to find out how life will begin right there. That's it for your sport. I'm George Addy Jr. Get his back with some more news. Good night. Sports was brought some news just in. A middle-aged woman has narrowly escaped death after her car was hit by a Tema-bound train at Jolo here in Akwa. The Kia Sportage four-wheel drive with registration number GN212112 was damaged beyond repairs. According to eyewitnesses, the accident occurred a few minutes past 6 p.m. Monday evening in front of one of the entrances to the Paris Chapel. The woman has been rushed to the 37 military hospital. When we return from this shop, from, from this very brief break, we'll go straight into showbiz. In showbiz tonight, with the launch of the 2014 edition of the Ghana Music Awards over, some musicians have started banking their hopes on categories that they feel are their strongest. So the boys of Redhead Maker Guru, for instance, is sure that he will sweep at least three awards on the final day, including being named the Artist of the Year. Hmm. We wish them luck, but the one-time BET award winner Sarkodie, whom some Ghanaians have associated with the famous Illuminati group, has once again debunked the rumors, saying he doesn't even understand what the word means. First and foremost, I don't know what that means. 
So I cannot even be the word. You know, I'm not. Okay. Have sent their condolences to the family of Komla Duma over the loss of the boss player. We have lost a great son. We've lost somebody, somebody who has been a living example to us, the young ones. So I think it's a heavy blow for us to bear, and it's going to take a while for the wounds to heal. But um, like you know, the wise people say, the Lord giveth and the Lord takes away. So we just have to accept it. He is. Like when I met him, as I said, it makes me feel like this is one of us who is like there, right? He didn't sell his identity to go anywhere. He was still Komlan Duma, you know, and that makes me feel like I, have, I still have to believe in what I'm doing. That's it for the bulletin, but let's take a, look, a look again at our top stories. Contractors working on the gas project assure first gas will be produced on April 28 this year. University of Ghana to have a 600-bed capacity teaching hospital by 2015. And the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority has arrested a 29-year-old froster reportedly recruiting people for the GRA. Commercial vehicles increased transport fares by 20% following approval from the Transport Ministry. And also the family of the late broadcaster Komla Dumo officially informed President Mahama of his death. Many thanks for your time. For more news, log on to myjoyonline.com. You can also follow us on Facebook and on our Twitter uh, page. My name is Gifty and do enjoy the rest of the evening. But up next is PM Express.